Welcome back coding fans. Here we are at Generate a Landscape. Um, and this is one that I think is really helpful. It's gonna be uh, something that we use a decent amount to um, play with different assignments and stuff like that. Um, so we'll just kind of roll through this for a little bit um, and we'll just show you what happens and then we'll show you what happens when we augment it. Um, so let's take a look at what's going on over here. Our job is to use a heights and an index uh, to create a landscape, all right? So here we are here, um, and we get variable heights and let all coordinates equal world dot all possible coordinates. And the one thing that I have an issue with is this variable heights thing right here. Um, I think that that shouldn't come first. I think that that should come after let all coordinates equal world dot all possible coordinates. Uh, and that's just a personal preference for me. So I'm gonna move it. If you don't move it, don't worry about it, okay? You can just ignore this part, but I'm gonna cut and paste this. So I'll go cut, right? And I'm gonna hit enter after let all coordinates and I like to paste it here. Um, and the reason is, is because like all coordinates is something that's telling the computer like that it's here on this map, which is a nine by nine. Um, and we're gonna have this in front of all of our world creation stuff anyway. Uh, so if we wanna come back and copy and paste this to make something different, that makes it a little bit easier. And plus I like to kind of group our variable and the index that it references together. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move variable, uh, the index to next to heights. And I like to keep them together because um, this index is going to be um, what we keep track of in our heights array. So let's go ahead and do our normal thing. Let all coordinates equal to world dot all possible coordinates. Uh, so all possible coordinates on this map is zero, zero, all the way up to eight, eight. So those are all the possible coordinates on here. And then these heights, these are going to be integers that control our heights on this map, all right? And it's going to increment the index all the way through. Um, so however many we have is what will kind of get done. So if we have four, it will go one, two, three, four, and then reset one, two, three, four. But realist realistically, it'll be at zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. So let's go ahead and deal with our heights index. Um, and let's make it run pretty fast. So I'm gonna say two, so we'll place two comma four comma three comma one. It's irrelevant how many you put, okay? So the interesting thing is, is because our index starts at zero, we'll place zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, and so it'll go like that. You'll kind of see what it's up. So it will repeat. So two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one. Okay. And that's our index starting at zero. So this is four coordinate and all coordinates. If the index equals the height count, index equals zero. So that means that will reset everything. So if we if we don't have this, it will go two, four, three, one, and then stop. This resets, so once we get to the end, once we get to the height count, once we get to that uh, fourth thing or the thing that is in the third position, uh, it will reset, all right? So for zero through, all right, and we need our heights, and the number that our height is depends on the index. So we're gonna put in heights, which is in our, our here right here, right here, heights, and then, because heights is not a single thing, we're going to bring our braces in by pulling down on the H. And this is where we're going to put our index, because we're keeping track of everything with our index. And right now, our index is zero. We've de dedicated or designated the variable to zero. All right, so we're going to place a block for however many it tells me. So world.place block at coordinate. Super simple. World dot place block oops world dot place block at coordinate all right remember capital block with parentheses behind it at lowercase coordinate all right once again this 
is the name of our for in loop, and that is where we are putting it. And then we gotta increment the index, and this part's really cool. Um, we, we've done this before when we're counting stuff, but this gets us to move from one thing in our index from like two to four to three to one. And by incrementing that, we're gonna say index plus equals one, and that will increment it, plus equals one. All right, so we'll be at index zero, which is two, index one, which is four, index uh, two, which is three, and index three, which is one. And then this will reset it. So let's go ahead and run our code and kind of see what's up. Run faster. All right, and you'll notice it'll keep placing in that pattern as we go. So two, four, Three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, all the way through. Now right, we can get some really neat patterns. Um, and we'll let this finish, but we'll kind of show you what's going on. So because this is a nine by nine, um, all right, we got our check mark. Because this is a nine by nine, we can really play with this um, by, or, or make this our own by augmenting our uh, index. So let's say we kind of want this to be a stadium, right? Well, I'm going to come through here and we're going to grab these. I'm going to hit select. I'm going to delete all of them. All right. And I want it to be a stadium. Um, so inside here, uh, this is a nine by nine. So I'm going to go three comma two comma one comma, zero, comma, zero, comma, zero, comma, one, comma, two, comma, three. So that's nine things, which means that it will uniformly place these nine things uh, to make uh, what I think looks like kind of stadium. Uh, and you'll notice that we get a really predictable pattern if we do this. Now, we could take this and put it in a 12 by 12 and just have six zeros in the middle. Um, but you'll notice that it, even when it's at zero, it'll still place a block. Um, so we're here. Um, and we can kind of do this. Let's play a little bit more. Um, you know, you got your check mark. You can stop here if you want. But if we wanted to play a little bit more, um, let's go ahead and place people in the stands here. Um, so we'll do this real quick. So we're going to need four lowercase coordinate in all coordinates. All right. So four coordinate in all coordinates. Space. We're going to pull down. We're going to get our braces. All right. And we're going to choose, I'm going to choose this side to be hopper, okay? So this is going to be the hopper side. So four coordinate and all coordinates. So, but I just want them in column zero, one, and two, okay? So if coordinate.column, all right, so column zero, one, and two. So that means... It needs to start at 2 and be less than. So less than or equal to 2. All right, so the less than or equal to 2 is 2, 1, and 0. We're going to world.place facing. World.place um, item facing direction. All right, we're going to world.place capital character. And then go back to the last lesson inside these parentheses, name colon space dot hopper. Okay, facing. So they're on the left and facing right is facing east and at lowercase coordinate. Okay, so there's that. And let's copy and paste that, and we're going to have this side be byte. So let's have the left side be hopper and the right side be byte. So I'm just going to copy this for loop, copy, and after this, give me some more lines of code. We're going to go paste. All right, so this is row 6, 7, and 8. So we're counting up on this side. Here we're counting down 2, 1 and 0. So this is 6, 7, and 8. So we're going to want to be greater than or equal to, so starting at 6 and going to the right, greater than or equal to uh, 
six. So greater than or equal to six is six, seven, and eight. We're going to world.place. I said this side's going to be byte, I think. So dot B-Y-T-E. And we want them facing left, which is west. So if we run this, um, we should get the same stadium view that we got. Uh-oh. So we got hollow stuff. Just going to hit stop. We're going to relaunch. Um, we'll restart, and that's not a problem. And here we go. Um, and that's part of it. The more complicated the code, the more it will glitch. I have found, however, if you start it off, run my code slow, and then speed it up, you don't have as many problems like that. Um, so here we are building again. Um, go through. We're getting our stadium. And then there's all our hoppers, and over here are all of our bites, right? And so, yeah, now we've got a stadium. And if we wanted to, we could may put people in here and have them run a race or whatever it is. Um, so that is how we get this done. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We're going to have some fun with this. We're going to make a castle using these, and we're going to use column and row references um, so that we can make a pretty cool castle. All right, guys. See you on the next one. Love you. Bye.